Hey Biofans, it's Mr. Hajarian. Welcome to video lecture number three for biomagnification. Uh, make sure you have your biomagnification skeleton notes in front of you. And let's get started. So, we are talking about biomagnification. Magnify to get bigger. Alright, so let's talk about DDT. What is DDT? It's dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. You don't have to remember that. But it's basically a pesticide that's used for mosquito and pest control when it comes to agricultural crops. In the body of an animal, DDT is metabolized into DDE. You don't have to know what that stands for. And it's actually dissolved in fat, not water, and it's stored in our fatty tissue. And every animal, regardless of how skinny or not skinny they are, they have fatty tissue in their body. And this tends to remain in the body. So what are some side effects of DDT use? It could actually remain on the plant or it could wash off into soils or streams and then be ingested by primary consumers. And remember, this is how you write primary consumers. Um, and then it could accumulate, which is another reason why it's called bioaccumulation, at higher levels in organisms higher up on the food chain. So for example, um, if you're going from a primary to a secondary to a tertiary, remember that it's actually getting bigger as it goes up the food chain, and that's why we have our upside down pyramid because it's magnifying as it's getting bigger. Now I also want to remind you, if you're in Mr. Jones's class or my class, you'll know that there's a distinction between biomagnification and bioaccumulation um, slightly, but for the sake of what we're doing here, we'll just kind of interchangeably use it, use these terms. Okay, so here is what I was talking about. So we have this pyramid, this upside down pyramid of biomagnification. So what exactly is happening? We have our producers over here, or our autotrophs, going up to the primary consumers, secondary, and tertiary consumers. And each time <clears throat> we're moving up trophic levels, this is actually magnifying. The, the amount of toxin is magnifying. So look at it like this. I'm going to draw a little fish for you here. A bigger fish there. Bigger fish there. And then a ginormous fish right there. Okay? Assuming that this one eats that one, that one eats that one, and then this one eats that one. Okay? <clears throat> Remember that the amount of energy as you go from one to another is actually decreasing. So for example, if you had a thousand kilojoules here, how much of it would this one get this one would get one tenth of that so how much would that be a hundred kilojoules what would happen to the other 900 kilojoules it would be lost to the environment as heat all right now each time you're moving up the amount of toxin let's just say let's just make up a number say five milligrams that number actually stays the same each time you go from one trophic level to the next so as you can see at the end here the number is the same as what it was here, except the amount of energy has decreased. And you also have to remember that this fish isn't just going to eat one of these. It's going to eat a lot of them. All right, so what are the consequences um, of having a toxin in the environment? You know, as we mentioned, DDT was one of them. Another one that we'll talk about is mercury. Um, there's plenty of them, but these are the ones that we'll be talking about. So. There's actually a decline in birds that were top level consumers. You have to remember, if you go back to the last slide over here, when you think about which ones are affected the most, it's these top level consumers that are impacted the most when it comes to a toxin in the environment. <clears throat> Some examples are, for example, eagles. Um, birds that lay eggs with thinner shells, um, it's been seen that they have a, a higher amount of the toxin in their body. So, thinner shells end up having a greater chance of breaking and this can also impact embryo development. Now if you look on your biomagnification skeleton notes there is a picture of embryos of humans, pig, reptiles and birds. Notice how similar they look to each other. Okay. And as we're doing this be sure to be filling out your soft notes. So remember we have our soft notes on this side right here. Be sure to fill those out. So the one that I'm on right now it's asking you what is an embryo. Make sure you fill that out. So how do they measure uh, how these eggshells were sort of thinning out? So they collected eggs from lots of abandoned nests, and they measured the thickness of these eggshells. 
and they measured the amount of DDE that was in the actual egg and they determined the association between eggshell thickness and DDE residue. So that's one way they went about it. And then interpreting the data. So the question is, if increased DDE concentrations cause increased eggshell thinning, how would you draw a graph showing the relationship between the eggshell thinning and DDE concentration? So basically we're making a correlation between the two. And this is what we're talking about. So eggshell thickness, so you have thin here, normal there, low concentrations of DDE here, high concentrations there. So as you can see, as the eggs are thinner, what's going on? Or as the concentrations get higher, what's happening with the eggshell? Now you have something in your uh, skeleton notes that basically gives you numbers, and your task is to use graph paper to make us a nice graph. Make sure it has a title, make sure it's clear, make sure you use as much of the page as you can, so don't make it a little tiny graph. Make sure that you're using all the space you're provided with. Okay, so is DDT still used today? Thankfully not. Uh, it was actually banned in the US in 1972, and I want you to think about that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And if it's a good thing, why is it a good thing? What do you think farmers think about that? What do you think consumers should think about that? So it's still used in some countries to control insects on crops. Uh, and then in countries with malaria, DDT is actually used for mosquito control. And that's a really big deal. All right, that's the end of that lecture. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you in class.